Cities and towns are not only growing in size and number. They are also gaining new influence. The urban transition offers significant opportunities to improve the quality of life, but whether this potential is realized depends critically on how cities are managed and on the national and local policies affecting their development. The development of urban areas is also closely linked to the rural economy through the exchange of labor, goods, services, information and technology. Neglecting urban issues leads to significant social and environmental costs, however. In the two most urbanized regions that the World Bank serves, Latin America and Europe, Central Asia, over half of the poor already live in urban areas. By 2025, two-thirds of the poor in these regions, and one-third of the poor in East and South Asia, will reside in cities or towns. The nature of urban poverty is more than an income or employment issue, and is also characterized by squalid living conditions, risks to life and health from poor sanitation, air pollution, crime and violence, traffic accidents, and natural disasters, and the breakdown of traditional familial and communal safety nets. Urban populations are also particularly hard hit by macro-financial shocks, such as the recent crises in East Asia and Russia. Urban environmental degradation has the most immediate effects on poor urban residents but also has serious national and global impacts. <laughs> Cities and towns are not only growing in size and number. They are also gaining new influence. The urban transition offers significant opportunities to improve the quality of life, but whether this potential is realized depends critically on how cities are managed and on the national and local policies affecting their development. The development of urban areas is also closely linked to the rural economy through the exchange of labor, goods, services, information and technology. Neglecting urban issues leads to significant social and environmental costs, however. In the two most urbanized regions that the World Bank serves, Latin America and Europe, Central Asia, over half of the poor already live in urban areas. By 2025, two-thirds of the poor in these regions, and one-third of the poor in East and South Asia, will reside in cities or towns. The nature of urban poverty is more than an income or employment issue, and is also characterized by squalid living conditions, risks to life and health from poor sanitation, air pollution, crime and violence, traffic accidents, and natural disasters, and the breakdown of traditional familial and communal safety nets. Urban populations are also particularly hard hit by macro-financial shocks, such as the recent crises in East Asia and Russia. Urban environmental degradation has the most immediate effects on poor urban residents but also has serious national and global impacts. So, what is quantum mechanics? Even though it was discovered by physicists, it's not a physical theory in the same sense as electromagnetism or general relativity. In the usual, hierarchy of sciences, with biology at the top, then chemistry, then physics, then maths. Quantum mechanics sits at a level between maths and physics that I don't know a good name for. Basically, quantum mechanics is the operating system that other physical theories run on as application software, with the exception of general relativity, which hasn't yet been successfully ported to this particular OS. So, what is quantum mechanics? Even though it was discovered by physicists, it's not a physical theory in the same sense as electromagnetism or general relativity. In the usual, hierarchy of sciences, with biology at the top, then chemistry, then physics, then maths, quantum mechanics sits at a level between maths and physics that I don't know a good name for. Basically, quantum mechanics is the operating system that other physical theories run on as application software with the exception of general relativity, which hasn't yet been successfully ported to this particular OS. I think that's not going to be uh, such uh, a viable option for Cerberus, but uh, that may be the way that they're going to approach it. Private equity, of course, is supposed to have the advantage of taking uh, management out of the spotlight of uh, quarterly uh, profits uh, and industry analysts and and uh, prying shareholder eyes, and that uh, hypothetically gives them a chance to take uh, slower, more patient routes to doing something to turn a company around. 
I would uh, I would hope, and I have some, I guess, optimism that some of the Cerberus team will have some creativity and imagination. I think that's not going to be uh, such a uh, a viable option for Cerberus, but uh, that may be the way that they're going to approach it. Private equity, of course, is supposed to have the advantage of taking uh, management out of the spotlight of uh, quarterly uh, profits uh, and industry analysts and and uh, prying shareholder eyes, and that uh, hypothetically gives them a chance to take uh, slower, more patient routes to doing something to turn a company around. I would, uh, I would hope, and I have some, I guess, optimism that some of the Cerberus team will have some creativity and imagination. In recent years, the phenomenon of climate change has garnered widespread attention. It is widely acknowledged that human activities, particularly the burning of fossil fuels and deforestation, have significantly contributed to this global issue. Scientists around the world are urgently researching sustainable solutions to mitigate the effects of climate change. Among these, renewable energy sources such as solar and wind power are increasingly being viewed as vital components of a more sustainable future. However, transitioning to these cleaner energy sources requires substantial investment and international cooperation. In recent years, the phenomenon of climate change has garnered widespread attention. It is widely acknowledged that human activities, particularly the burning of fossil fuels and deforestation, have significantly contributed to this global issue. Scientists around the world are urgently researching sustainable solutions to mitigate the effects of climate change. Among these, renewable energy sources such as solar and wind power are increasingly being viewed as vital components of a more sustainable future. However, transitioning to these cleaner energy sources requires substantial investment and international cooperation. Art is a reflection of human expression. It takes various forms, from visual arts like painting and sculpture to performing arts like dance and theatre. Throughout history, art has been used to communicate ideas, emotions, and cultural values. It serves as a means of creative communication, allowing artists to convey their perspectives and interpretations of the world. In recent years, technology has opened up new possibilities for art, with digital media, virtual reality, and interactive installations expanding the boundaries of artistic exploration. Art has the power to inspire, challenge, and provoke thought, making it an essential part of our lives. It is a testament to human creativity and the desire to express the ineffable. Art is a reflection of human expression. It takes various forms, from visual arts like painting and sculpture to performing arts like dance and theatre. Throughout history, art has been used to communicate ideas, emotions, and cultural values. It serves as a means of creative communication, allowing artists to convey their perspectives and interpretations of the world. In recent years, technology has opened up new possibilities for art, with digital media, virtual reality, and interactive installations expanding the boundaries of artistic exploration. Art has the power to inspire, challenge, and provoke thought, making it an essential part of our lives. It is a testament to human creativity and the desire to express the ineffable. The impact of climate change on our planet is becoming increasingly evident. Rising temperatures, more frequent extreme weather events, and melting glaciers are just a few of the signs that our climate is changing. To combat this crisis, it is essential for individuals, communities, and governments to take proactive actions. One of the most effective ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions is to transition to renewable sources of energy, such as solar and wind power. Additionally, conservation efforts, like reforestation and protecting endangered species, can help maintain the balance of our ecosystems. In the face of this global challenge, Cooperation and collective action are crucial to safeguarding our planet for future generations. The impact of climate change on our planet is becoming increasingly evident. 
Rising temperatures, more frequent extreme weather events, and melting glaciers are just a few of the signs that our climate is changing. To combat this crisis, it is essential for individuals, communities, and governments to take proactive actions. One of the most effective ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions is to transition to renewable sources of energy, such as solar and wind power. Additionally, conservation efforts, like reforestation and protecting endangered species, can help maintain the balance of our ecosystems. In the face of this global challenge, cooperation and collective action are crucial to safeguarding our planet for future generations. Space exploration has always been a source of endless fascination and scientific discovery. From the first human landing on the Moon in 1969 to the recent exploration of Mars, humans have been driven by their innate curiosity to understand the universe beyond our planet. The development of advanced propulsion technologies has allowed us to send robotic spacecraft to explore distant worlds in our solar system. These missions have provided valuable insights into the geology, climate, and potential habitability of other celestial bodies. Looking forward, the next frontier in space exploration is the search for exoplanets beyond our solar system, which could potentially harbor extraterrestrial life. Space exploration has always been a source of endless fascination and scientific discovery. From the first human landing on the Moon in 1969 to the recent exploration of Mars, humans have been driven by their innate curiosity to understand the universe beyond our planet. The development of advanced propulsion technologies has allowed us to send robotic spacecraft to explore distant worlds in our solar system. These missions have provided valuable insights into the geology, climate, and potential habitability of other celestial bodies. Looking forward, the next frontier in space exploration is the search for exoplanets beyond our solar system, which could potentially harbor extraterrestrial life. The Industrial Revolution, which began in the late 18th century, marked a significant breakthrough in human history. It brought about a rapid revolution in technological advancements, leading to the mechanization of various industries. This period witnessed the emergence of steam engines, textile mills, and the growth of urban centers. As a result, there was a substantial expansion in the demand for labor, particularly in factories. Workers faced harsh working conditions, long hours, and low wages, which eventually contributed to labor movements and the fight for workers' rights. The Industrial Revolution, which began in the late 18th century, marked a significant breakthrough in human history. It brought about a rapid revolution in technological advancements, leading to the mechanization of various industries. This period witnessed the emergence of steam engines, textile mills, and the growth of urban centers. As a result, there was a substantial expansion in the demand for labor, particularly in factories. Workers faced harsh working conditions, long hours, and low wages, which eventually contributed to labor movements and the fight for workers' rights. Two decades ago, Kashmiri houseboat owners rubbed their hands every spring at the prospect of the annual influx of tourists. From May to October, the hyacinth-choked waters of Dal Lake saw flotillas of vividly painted shikaras carrying Indian families, boho westerners, young travelers and wide-eyed Japanese. Carpet sellers honed their skills, as did purveyors of anything remotely embroidered while the houseboats initiated by the British Raj provided unusual accommodation. Any foreigners venturing there risked their lives, proved in 1995 when five young Europeans were kidnapped and murdered. Two decades ago, Kashmiri houseboat owners rubbed their hands every spring at the prospect of the annual influx of tourists. From May to October, the hyacinth-choked waters of Dal Lake saw flotillas of vividly painted shikaras carrying Indian families, boho westerners, young travelers and wide-eyed Japanese. Carpet sellers honed their skills, as did purveyors of anything remotely embroidered while the houseboats initiated by the British Raj provided unusual accommodation. 
Any foreigners venturing there risked their lives, proved in 1995 when five young Europeans were kidnapped and murdered. So between 4000 and 3000 BC the Mesopotamian Sumerian cultures do not practice any kind of burial. And then, about 3000, in the early dynastic period, these burials start to reappear, and they reappear with a certain amount of conspicuous consumption, and this is the context for the royal burials at Ur. Okay, so, the royal cemetery consists of quite a number of pits, so these are the excavation workers who are coming down into the pits. So you get some sense of how really deep and how really difficult it was to construct these chambers. So between 4000 and 3000 BC the Mesopotamian Sumerian cultures do not practice any kind of burial. And then, about 3000, in the early dynastic period, these burials start to reappear, and they reappear with a certain amount of conspicuous consumption, and this is the context for the royal burials at Ur. Okay, so, the royal cemetery consists of quite a number of pits, so these are the excavation workers who are coming down into the pits. So you get some sense of how really deep and how really difficult it was to construct these chambers. Green chemistry is a concept designed to develop technologies which allow chemistry to be practiced with minimal damage to the environment or in an environmentally compatible way and it's meant to cover both chemical processes and chemical products. The center, if you would, set up about seven or eight years ago, and the idea was to provide a hub of activities that covered fundamental research work, industrial collaboration, but also educational developments. So we work with schools and on public projects as well, and also networking. So we network out to well over 1,000 people around the globe. Green chemistry is a concept designed to develop technologies which allow chemistry to be practiced with minimal damage to the environment or in an environmentally compatible way. And it's meant to cover both chemical processes and chemical products. The center, if you would, set up about seven or eight years ago, and the idea was to provide a hub of activities that covered fundamental research work, industrial collaboration, but also educational developments. So we work with schools and on public projects as well, and also networking. So we network out to well over 1,000 people around the globe. The thing that makes it difficult is because even if life had evolved on Mars, the chances of it being preserved are very small. If we use Earth as a reference and, and our planet is, is teeming with life, yet it, it rarely preserves evidence of life in the fossil record. And the focus now is on exploring for uh, habitable environments. You're looking for water, a source of energy, either solar energy or thermal energy or chemical energy, and, and then organic carbon, assuming life as we know it on Earth based on carbon. So those, those are sort of the three things that we're looking for in the course of our mission. The thing that makes it difficult is because even if life had evolved on Mars, the chances of it being preserved are very small. If we use Earth as a reference and, and our planet is, is teeming with life, yet it, it rarely preserves evidence of life in the fossil record. And the focus now is on exploring for uh, habitable environments. You're looking for water, a source of energy, either solar energy or thermal energy or chemical energy. And, and then organic carbon, assuming life as we know it on Earth, based on carbon. So those, those are sort of the three things that we're looking for in the course of our mission. In this tutorial, we will show you how to find specific journal articles using the library catalog. The university subscribes to over 18,000 journals across a variety of subjects, most of which are available electronically to find a specific journal article using a library catalog. We need to search by the journal name as individual article titles are not listed in the catalog. In this tutorial, we will show you how to find specific journal articles using the library catalog. The university subscribes to over 18,000 journals across a variety of subjects, most of which are available electronically to find a specific journal article using a library catalog. We need to search by the journal name as individual article titles are not listed in the catalog. Belief is the human capacity to imagine, to be creative, to hope and dream, to infuse the world with meanings, and to cast our aspirations far and wide.
limited neither by personal experience nor material reality. Believing is a commitment, an investment, a devotion to possibilities. Beliefs permeate neurobiologies, bodies and ecologies acting as dynamic agents in evolutionary processes. The human capacity for belief, the specifics of belief, and I, and our diverse belief systems shape, structure and alter our daily lives, our societies, and the world around us. Belief is the human capacity to imagine, to be creative, to hope and dream, to infuse the world with meanings, and to cast our aspirations far and wide. Limited neither by personal experience nor material reality. Believing is a commitment, an investment, a devotion to possibilities. Beliefs permeate neurobiologies, bodies and ecologies acting as dynamic agents in evolutionary processes. The human capacity for belief, the specifics of belief, and I, and our diverse belief systems shape, structure and alter our daily lives, our societies, and the world around us. Also, malaria is something that is a very complex disease with this complex life cycle. That means that if you're going to eliminate it, you have to be able to target cute parasites and humans. You have to be able to target parasites in the mosquitoes, that mosquito population. And so that requires a lot of resources. It requires really good planning and a health system across all these different levels. And so I think the political capital that you need for that, the educational infrastructure you need for that, the economic resources you need for that are quite a challenge. Also, malaria is something that is a very complex disease with this complex life cycle. That means that if you're going to eliminate it, you have to be able to target cute parasites and humans. You have to be able to target parasites in the mosquitoes, that mosquito population. And so that requires a lot of resources. It requires really good planning and a health system across all these different levels. And so I think the political capital that you need for that, the educational infrastructure you need for that, the economic resources you need for that are quite a challenge. <laughs>